What's going on? And welcome back to Wall Street Ben Black Playbook. And I'm coming back with some more swing trade ideas. Yes, I'm in my swing trade bag and I'm loving it. Okay, I'm in my swing trading bag and I am loving it. And we're going to go through it, but really quick, let's look out for it. So since this was the last swing play that we updated, and baby, now it blew through all of our levels, our trend line, our 1340, our 1390, and coming up here and testing the 1450, say what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is eating for us. We're up 240% on this, and I am so happy about it. Earnings tomorrow. So we are protecting our, um, we are obviously in calls. We've been in calls um, this entire week since Monday, no, since Tuesday. Did we turn to calls Monday? I think so. Um, and we've been in it, and we have been playing this. Um off of earnings, right? But we are going to protect our calls with some puts because you never know what direction it's going to go, especially since who else has earnings after hours? Apple, right? If we lose Apple, we lose the market. If we keep Apple, look up that bullish trifecta, y'all. All right, so let's come back over here to KMB. KMB, don't sleep on KMB. This is Kimberly Clark corporation. They own uh, Kotex, Huggies, the pins. They make training pants, swimming pants, like underwear, uh, feminine products, all of that. I absolutely love KMB. Um, I love them as for dividends. They pay out a $1.18. $1.18, y'all, for every share that you own. Come on. I love KMB. I believe in them, uh, like the longevity of them and what they do. Um, so I am very much so invested in KMB in my long-term portfolio. So if we are here and we're looking, we can even just come here to the weekly so we can truly see. Uh, since 2019, so we're coming up on three years, this has been a pretty... Pretty key supply zone in here around this 143.50 and demand zone around this 130.38. It just rarely is going to go up. We had one time in the past ever where it, the price was over this 143, where it broke over the supply zone and it pulled back. When it pulled back, uh, it was not able to hold it as support as a demand zone. So it fell back and we've been in this range. So there's truthfully in the past three years only been 2020, which of course the pandemic, right? Not necessarily going to count that everything dropped in or basically everything dropped in, but it's basically just been in 2022 since we fell under here when we had the low in March, when we had the low in June and when we had the low in October coming here and we're back there. Now, since we did break back above, it didn't come all the way up to this, the to the supply zone in here around the 143 consolidated in here. And then we got this drop Monday. We got this drop out of this consolidation, uh, out of that base, which we now can look at as distribution, right? And then this week is when we fell out of it. Or last week, I apologize, we are on the weekly, is when we did fall out of that base, and then we've just been bouncing off of it um, since then. Now, just holding it as support. Now, today, we you see we did open low down here, and it came, it did trend down and bounced off, and then got this move back up. So I am watching KMB, because I would love to catch the move out of this consolidation. Um, so if we can get a close on KMB above, because I'm just going to put it up here at the top of these wicks, so above 131, right? I would love to be able to ride this back up here towards this 134.70, which would be a swing play. This would be a swing play. KMB does not move that much in a day. Um, now, I don't think this is anything we're going to be able to hold for days and days and days, but I do think that it's going to give us a, um, a good move. So you see when they had their earnings on the 25th, this is when it actually gapped down and they uh, missed out on revenue, right? So this is where that gap down came. And now we've been accumulating here at this demand zone or, well, we've been basing here. I'm going to call it accumulation just because it's at my demand zone. But if it breaks to the downside, then we know that this was 
once again, distributing, right? If it breaks below my demand zone, which I would love that too. If we got this break below 128, but my eyes are also on it for a break above 131 to carry here. And perhaps it'll come back inside of this base and give us this move here towards this 139. We do see that the RSI is starting to kissing here. We're getting this movement up there. Now let's check. Um, Oh, now, something else that is on my mind too, right? Because I don't trade biased. I'm paying attention to all the past three days have been bullish days. Look at the volume. Volume is significantly decreasing. The volume is significantly, significantly decreasing. And my eyes are on that. My eyes are on that. And I would not be surprised if we did get this break to the downside. Um, so we've looked at the structure. Now let's look at trend, right? Let me not skip. Let's look at the trend that we are in. We're going to do it from low to low. This is bringing us in here. We have one, two, three touches off of our primary support trend line, which I always I like to keep my primary as white. And then if I come down here to find the secondary trends, which is easier found on the one hour, maybe it's just ranging, right? It's really giving me that the same trend line in here. As far as highs, I would put a high down here though for resistance, for my resistance secondary trend line, which I'll annotate as blue. And then I'll come here on the five minute to look in here, uh, five or 15 to check out the minor trend, which I'll do this yellowish color. And then this is my minor trend in here. So remember, this is the second, the blue is the secondary, secondary resistance trend line. So a break above this, which would also be a break above this consolidation in this 131, right? We're seeing that that hits, that matches up. That'll be beautiful. Or if we get this break below this minor trend line, back down here to my primary support trend line, which would break that and then come down past this demand zone, that will also be beautiful. Now, I'm not going to actually track it like that. I'm not going to sit and like track that movement like that. I did enter into a call today off of this bounce, off of this bounce in here. I did enter into a call uh, back in here. It was about a 35% move. It was a risky entry because it was actually looking like it was going to break below. Um, I took a little bit of a gamble entering in on there and it, you know, it played out uh, this time. Um, ooh, look at that RSI flowing up in there. Mm, eyes on the prize. I'm definitely watching for a break above this 131. That would be a beautiful swing trade entry. That would be a beautiful swing trade entry. Um, okay, so let's go back to our daily now. So we've looked at the structure, which is supply and demand. We've charted out the trends on higher and lower time frames. We've looked at the candlestick in relation with volume as well. We've uh, already kind of skipped around and looked at the RSI for indicator because that's step four is to then look at your indicators. But when I'm on my daily, the first thing I want to look at again is my 200, my 100, and my 50 moving average. So I'm going to pull up the 200 first because we are on the daily. So remember this 200 moving average, it acts as like the value zone for it. Um, so if you see the price is above the 200 moving average on the daily or on your weekly or higher, this is saying that it's trading above its value. And by value, don't necessarily think of it as a, like a monetary sentiment, but more as market sentiment, in my opinion. Like the market is willing to trade this above its value and keep buying into it and pushing it up above um, the value zone, which is, again, that 200. And when it's trading below it, it's below value and you could expect to buy puts, right? And so because it's on the daily or higher, we expect this to be able to run. So when we come here and now let's look 
in relation to where we are, it was not able to keep the 200 since last Friday. Today, it has broke above this 200 and coming right up on here on this secondary trend, right on the highs of the secondary trend line here. So again, that break above the secondary trend line and this base that's been forming in here, this consolidation in here for the past few days is going to be a beautiful move. It all lines up right there. It all lines up right there. Uh, so now let's check our 50. Um, the reason why I skipped to the 50 instead of pulling up to 200 is because that 50 or the 100 is because the 50 and the 200 are going to give you that golden cross or that death cross signal. So if we see it, when we see the 50 cross above the 200, this is a really good sign to go long, that you'll be able to hold it um, to go long. Now, when it crossed right here, right, we see it went up maybe about another $2, and then it's just been chopping in this range, and we did lose this 50, right, and then lost to 200. So although we have that golden cross in there, and it came from under it, I love that. So in an uptrend, the 50 acts as your first resistance level. And then the 100 is going to act as the second resistance level. So see here, this 50 is the first resistance level it had to get to in this uptrend. Pulled back, held it, came up, and then it needed to get past the 100. Came in it, pulled back a little bit, but took the 200, which is the last level it needs to get in, held it, and we're up there. Now, in a downtrend, the 50 is the first level of support you have to go through. And as we see, this 100 never truly moved to cross above the 200 as well. So we're watching, but look how this 50 is coming up in congruence with this base that we marked off in here, right? And if I was to move my level up, like where I have this base marked off to where it has it here, that would make more sense because I'm hitting all of these candles, right? But how I drew out my base, I just wanted to catch all of the wicks down here as well. But see how if I move it here, I'm getting many, many touches off of these candles, whether it's the end of the body or um, with the wick coming through. And again, that's in congruence with where I have the 50 at. Now I'm going to keep mine where it was at. I'm, I'm going to keep it in here because I like to just, even on the, the wicks, I like to catch that in there. However, breaking out of this 131, right? I was thinking here like around this 134, 40, 30 area, but I also know that this 135, 23, where this 50 is, if we do break or stay above this 200, my next res resistance level that I'll be looking to take it to is this 135, 23 in here. Uh, I think I will go ahead and move my zone in there. So I'll be looking for that. All right, now let's check out Lyft. So the reason why Lyft is on my uh, on my radar is because they actually just came out with a new initiative that I think is pretty cool. Um, their initiative is that if you are on your way to a job interview, you get that ride for free. And if you get hired, they will actually um, give you up to three weeks of free rides to get to your job until you get your first paycheck. So I think that's, I just think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so I popped over to check out the chart. Notice that they've only had one bad earnings in 2019. Lyft has only had one bad earnings since 2019. Now in November, they did miss revenue by the by like just barely the estimate was 1.05 billion 1.056 billion and it came in reported as 1.054 billion um and yes they have earnings next week <laughs> right so my eyes are my eyes are on lift like I was kind of looking like oh okay not me sleeping on lift lately so um just checking them out now these are the three levels that I came in and drawn because why would I draw all the way up here at 65 
Why, why would I do that, right? The first thing, and I'll go ahead and put this as my supply zone. We'll mark that as um, the supply zone because above that 2277, above that 23, then there's just a really big gap up there to 30. So baby, let, let's just take this 23 and pull back to retest this and go back up. Uh, I'd love to catch that. Love to catch that. Um, now, although clearly this is acting as a supply zone right now, right? It is acting as a supply zone at this current moment because we're beneath it and it has held it. I just don't know why I haven't marked as green, but I'm going to keep that marked as green because <laughs> I'd love for it to take back um, to take back over it. So the level that I am in here watching on lift is going to be the 1744, 1745 area, which we see has been, it's been respected. We see this money grab there and a money grab there and there, right? I love it. This has been respected. We're coming back up to it. So I love to get this break back above, watch it pull back, maybe possibly we can get us a retest in here. And then to continue up, I'd like to take this from the 17, we'll say like above 1750 in here to this 2046, which don't sleep on that. Don't sleep on that because that'd be a 16% move. Don't sleep on that. I would love to catch that. Now, because overall, yes, well, not even overall, yes, this is just acting as a supply zone, right? I'm also aware and then looking at the RSI, this could very much so reject. And I'm fine with that too. I'll be fine with that move too. I'll be looking to take it back down here towards this 15, possibly. Yeah, but I'll be looking to take it back down here towards this 15. Uh, if it does get this break below. And I think that'll be a nice little, that'll be a nice move in there. So let's check out, we've looked at structure in here. Now let's check out the trend. Where's my highs? Where's my lows? This is it for the primary trend line, right? High, high, because this was broken. And here, these lower highs, that was broken when it came out. So now I need to connect that. We see these lows that we are making, making slightly. So lower lows, lower highs. A reject could be expected. Looks like a reject could be expected. And from looking at that now, having my trend, this is actually where I'd be looking to take that down to in here around this 1385. And that looks delish. That looks simply delicious. But if it does break outside of that trend line to take that there, that looks delicious, y'all. All right. So now we, let's look at our candlesticks. I mean, again, just coming in here, although I do like that pin bar rejection. What's the volume looking like? Volume was increasing a little bit. Now today it is only 12 right now. So we still have about three hours left as far as seeing where that volume is gonna come into play. But let's see, we're about 8.7 million in volume today, which I see in this bottom right where I'm circling. This has been the average volume of today. Let's look at what it was for yesterday. You just move your thing over to hide yesterday. So yesterday's volume was 12.93. And then the day before that was 10.34 million. So we'll wanna watch out. What was it yesterday? 10, 12.93 million. And then today we're sitting at about 8.7 million. Okay. So we definitely want to keep our eyes on the volume in there. Um, Y'all, look, that thing, it's trying to push up over there. It's trying to push up above the 1744. It is trying, like, look, let's just go down to the five-minute really quick. Look, 
how hard it is trying. It is definitely trying. If we're looking at RSI down here, it still has so much room to run um, up there because it's just in this no trend zone. So I love it. Um, and we see three, well, we see four positive changes in the candlesticks, which a change in candles is simply just uh, the difference between the close of candle A to the different uh, to the close of candle B. If it closed higher, it was a positive change. If it closed lower, it was a negative change. Um, so now our handy and dandy indicators. Now remember in an uptrend, the 200 is that last level of support that we needed to go to. So the 50 is going to be trading below. Right, that was that first level, and then the 100 will be there in the middle. We've gotten past all of that. I'm not seeing anything as far as like uh, any crosses coming up on there. Yeah, I don't see anything as far as a cross coming up on there. Um, those are honestly just my key levels in there. I'm watching lift to see if it breaks above the 1745 or if we're gonna reject at the 1745. We break above, I wanna take it to 2050. We break below, I wanna take it down here to this 1385. All right, y'all, happy trading. And make sure that you are not only subscribed here to the YouTube channel, but as well as our Discord where we get it in and I make sure that we are all keeping up with these swing trades and making that bag together. Happy trading. Bye.